Welcome to Gregolis TV Daily. Hope you're having a fantastic day. The OnePlus devices that you might be looking forward to, such as the OnePlus Pad 3, OnePlus Pad 2, and the OnePlus Watch 3 releases have been delayed. Some of these devices were due to be released in the second half of this year, and they might fall into 2025. The latest is coming from Android Headlines that says that the, again, the Oppo Pad 3, OnePlus Pad 2, and the OnePlus Watch 3 have been delayed, and they go in to say that basically they were due to be released in the second half sometime between uh, of July and December of this year, and it seems like they're delayed now. They still obviously could come out this year, uh, but when you're saying it's supposed to come out in the second half of this year and it's been delayed, it sounds like it's going to end up being in 2025, which is a bit of a disappointment because the OnePlus pad, uh, even though it wasn't the most powerful, spec'd out tablet, it was still a good deal and it was pretty fast and then they were going to improve on that, throw a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in there. Um, better everything basically and it probably you would have to guess would probably still have a really good quote-unquote economical price but it looks like it's been delayed hopefully it hasn't been canceled and hopefully it'll still make its way into 2024 or at least early 2025. Our last story of the day is a bit of good news and it has to do with the Pixel 9, 9 Pro and 9 Pro XL and an Antutu benchmark and some big improvements overall with the scores. Now, this is a tweet that was put out by the Galox, and uh, his tweet uh, his says that the li a live look at the Pixel 9, 9 Pro, and 9 XL, if you wanna see the phones in full, I'll link them down below. I just don't wanna put them up for copyright strike reasons, but I did look at these Antu Antutu benchmarks, and he says uh, not a big performance jump on the 9 Pro XL over the, 9 Pro, over the 8 Pro, and I did a little bit of digging and actually, it actually is quite a big difference. And uh, when I looked at a Pixel 8 Pro and 22 benchmark score, the scores for the Pixel 9 Pro versus 9 Pro XL actually versus the 9 Pro 8 Pro, and I'm all over the place, is 20% overall improvement, which is amazing. Most phones usually they get about 15%, and then 26 in percent improvement of the GPU performance. So for gaming or uh, video editing or anything else that's gonna use the GPU or wants to use the GPU are gonna see some really, really nice gains on there. So, you know, go jumping from the Tensor G3 to the Tensor G4 should look pretty good. It's already gonna be a really smooth device, but then when you add in those performance gains, you're looking like this phone might be able to take that next step up in gaming from middle, medium to high settings to high settings all the time pretty much on there. So some nice looking jumps on here. Now you might you might ask, what is the difference between the Tensor G4 and 22 benchmark and a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3? And that one is pretty big. That's a 25% difference being that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is that much more powerful. So that one still is outperforming what you get on a Tensor G4, but at least Tensor G4 took a pretty big jump in the right direction. Still not matching a, a, you know, a processor from last year, pretty much, but still a really good, powerful jump in general. Are you guys getting the Pixel 9, 9 Pro, or 9 Pro XL? Let me know in the comments down below and why. And actually, actually, if you get the Pixel Fold 2, that will also have the Tensor G4 in it. Let me know. Have a great day. We'll see you down the road. Peace.